It's In The Field Radio, y'all, on 91.3 FM, WVKR, Poughkeepsie, Independent Radio. I'm in the field right now. And it goes a little yeah. something like... Welcome to In The Field Radio. It's me, the Lady D, live from the Green Bean in an undisclosed location. It's nice to be able to hang out with y'all tonight. Um, what a week. Like, what a crazy week. Um, first, you know, I want to say rest in peace, you know, to Virgil Abloh. And then right after that, it was Chadwick Boseman's heavenly birthday. And I just mentioned those two because the general consensus was that these two people were just going through a major illness, like a crazy health crisis. And through it all, they just continued to work and continue to give themselves to people to art to the world and I don't know personally it just had me thinking whether I would do that like what if something crazy was going on with me what would I do would I stop and be like no I'm gonna spend this time with my family no I'm gonna just relax and just try to get through this or would I just keep pushing and keep giving myself and I don't know I don't know if y'all was thinking about it but think about it like what would you do personally a few months ago one of my favorite uncles passed away and it was a similar situation where nobody knew that he was sick no one knew and then it was just the end and he had given me you know a cd of music that he had recorded finally and no one had any idea and I was a little upset about it like I wish I knew but in the same time like I kept in contact with him like I didn't feel any guilt like I hadn't reached out to him I hadn't spoken to him in years or anything like some of the other family members but I did feel a little angry that I didn't know you know but he was the type of person he didn't want people feeling bad for him and I don't know I don't know if I could just not tell anybody but I'm not even gonna hold you events like this have me thinking about my own mortality and you just take these moments and stop you know evaluate what your life is like evaluate what you're doing with yourself are you living life to the fullest are you cherishing every moment and just you know do the best you can do right by people and just make the most out of your time here because you never know so speaking of living life to the fullest we got an interview tonight with richard he's from st louis i think that he's a really good time y'all will enjoy that but first, let's get into some music, and we'll be back. Welcome back to In The Field Radio. I'm Aaron Boogie. I'm here with Lady D, finally. Hey, what's going on? And we're here with Richard. Hello, hello, hello. All the way from St. Louis. Yes, yes, far. Ooh, St. Louis. <laughs> Welcome. This far. is exciting times for us. We got Deb back. We got St. Louis in the house. Yep, yep. So for those who don't know, who is Richard House? And is it Richard House or is it just Richard? Because I So it's Richard. It's Richard. The artist is Richard. The label or the collective is Richard House. Although I call it a collective, I'm by myself right now. So the label that I created is Richard House. Okay. Um, okay. So I I want to do like House of Richard, but there's already so many places like House of Yada, Yada, Yada. So I just swapped them. Um, But artists like I release stuff as Richard and then label it's on as Richard or some people sometimes people just call me Richard so it's whichever honestly <laughs> um, like my website is Richard House anything is work merchandise is Richard House all right. Dang, so you set all this up yourself? You, you're a one man. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying not to be, but uh, for the last, you know, three, four years, it's been me. And I'm, I'm just kind of at a point now where I'm just like, it's gonna be me. And <laughs> I'm just, right. yeah. So yeah, I had to get like the LLC and do all the legal stuff and all that. Yeah. Wow. Shout but you know what? At least you know business. what you want. 
and you know like how to do the work and everything you're not waiting for anyone yeah so anybody that wants to work with you is gonna have to keep up that pace pretty much uh, i think i've because i'm a huge uh little wayne fan um and so i was kind of recently in the media i was observing what he went through legally and so at that time i was formulating like oh i want to do music and i want to you know get into it and i was watching what he was going through going through with his contract and stuff and i was like if somebody as big as him be put in a situation where they can't release music what will happen to someone as you know as small as me as far as like anything legal or anything just anything in that realm and so I was, I was paranoid to be honest so i was like i just need to make sure i have all my ducks in a row going into this and so i did the llc I do the ASCAP thing. I did the cop. I do the copyright stuff. Like I do all that usually before music is released because I guess I'm mortified of anything happening because of me watching my favorite artist go through what he went through for years and just not being able to like, play music. You know, having his stuff taken down and just so much stuff. So I was like, I never want that to happen to me starting out. So on the forefront of stuff, I'm just gonna make sure like everything is like polished and, and done correctly. Mm-hmm. But as far as who's Richard, I would say I'm, I'm a rap rapper slash EDM artist. Um, as far as like my sound and what I like to do, I, I'm influenced by events that go on in my life and just in the world. So at any given moment, I could be singing. Or at any given moment, I could be screaming. Any given moment, I could be rapping. Any given moment, I could be rapping about something serious like trauma or just having fun. And so I'm, I'm just inspired by events. I write based on what's happening. And I, who is, I never I never know how to answer that question, who is Richard, because like I said, the events cause me to change so often as far as what I'm writing about. I'm just, I would say, so I would answer that question. Richard is um, experienced, I guess. I'm experienced, my best way to sum it up. I like I love that, that word. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so now are you from St. Louis? You grew up there? Yes, been here 28 years, yes. All right, so what was a young Richard like growing up? And, you know, talk talk a little bit about being from St. Louis and the hip hop scene from St. Louis, too. Because I heard it's dangerous. Yikes, you say you heard it's bad. I'm dead. (laughs) (laughs) Yay. Um, That is is factual. It is. Um, It's, I'll talk about that later. But it's um, growing up, you know, you guys know about Nelly, of course. Like, he was like Jesus. You know, growing up here, um, <laughs> like and he and, and the thing was, Nelly always spent like a lot of time in St. Louis. Like he'd be like at like a barber shop or something like that, and so you always hear about like where he was and when people saw him. So he was like Jesus, and then he was like so mainstream at the time. Um, and then growing up, I guess my generation, because I consider I don't consider myself the latest generation anymore. I consider myself the generation behind the latest generation. Um, mm-hmm. My generation, I would say the St. Louis scene was like, I don't think there's words to describe it because there was, our radio stations basically played nothing with St. Louis artists. Like, they played St. Louis artists more than national artists. Now that's flipped. Well, I don't even know because I don't listen to the radio, but it was so, you had people like I Came the Dream, you had people like The Whole Nine, uh, you had people like Pretty Willie, you had just like so many like legendary St. Louis artists. So like if you're anywhere in St. Louis and you play one of those songs, like everybody's gonna sing like I don't care who they are where they come from like everybody literally is gonna be singing any of those songs yeah Shorty the Prince like there's so many artists growing up St. Louis based I think Nelly probably of course Nelly everybody knows his stuff his early stuff it, it, I don't even have words to describe it because it was such like a, a moment or a shift or it was just and I wish I was older because a lot of these songs were like club songs and so I never got the a chance to experience like being like in the club or being like out and you know in one of these songs, I was like 12, but um, right. <laughs> it, I wish it, it was it, it was cultural, and I mean that in so many ways because, like I said, these songs really like the, the local artists like they took over. Like I said, our radio stations literally because we had like a top 10 countdown, the whole top 10 would be just like St. Louis, St. Louis, St. Louis, and number one would be like Nelly. And it, it was just mm-hmm. it, it was just it was like a, a phenomenon, but now that shifted. I don't think we. I, uh, there is a St. Louis scene, but it's more so shifted to digital. Like, there's a lot of YouTube, a lot of, you know, warranted to do, keeping up with the times. It's not like as radio savvy as it was. But it's not for me because I don't keep up with the scene like that anymore because to me, the sound has changed. It's not that nostalgic sound to me. Like, I think St. Louis, it's kind of like, you know, like you guys know, like Chicago has like real music or um, Detroit has like that certain thing or like, you know, West Coast has like a certain sound. I think now St. Louis has a sound. And 
I don't know how to exactly describe it, but it's not the same that it used to be because like for all the artists I just named, I think you had like an R&B artist or you had like a very lip artist or you had, you know, very, somebody who combined both of those where I think now it just, I don't want to say it sounds the same because I don't want to offend anybody, but um, mm -hmm. it's just, it, it, it just, it's kind of like the St. Louis has different sound now. I don't know how to describe it. I don't even know if there's a name for it. Going back to, you know, Lady D, what you said about it being dangerous. I think the, the, the current St. Louis sound highlights a lot of what's dangerous about it. And I think that's why it's not appealing to me, more say, and I'm not mm. keeping up as much. Like I know who artists are and I know a couple of their songs. And if I see them in public, I'm like, oh, you're such and such. But like the actual sound of St. Louis talks a lot about kind of what you referenced as far as that date. Mm. And so you started writing music at age six? Yeah. Uh, at first, it was like very like, you know, how it's like, oh, I think I can do this. I didn't get like serious, serious until about 17, 18. So I've been seriously writing music because I used to like, I diaried or I journaled. And so I used to just like write music in that as kind of like a, you know, cathartic release or whatever. And then I think the, the first time I was like, I'm going to actually write a song that I'm going to sing one day. I mean, I, I wrote my very first song ever that I released. I actually just released the song like three years ago. So it, it took like a decade to release it. Um, mm -hmm. I wrote my very first song or the, the, I guess the foundation of what will be my very first single called Fist. I wrote like the first six lines to it maybe when I was like 17. And I think that was the point at which I was like, let's seriously write a song. Let's not write to, you know, not that none of the stuff wasn't serious before, but I've never shared, I still have like that journal, but I've never shared like any of the lyrics out of that because it was more like I said, for like a therapeutic release versus the songs I started writing, I was about 17, 18, were like, okay, people, I wrote them with the intention. Someday I hope people will hear these. Like these are songs I want to shoot. These are not like in their therapeutic in nature still, but like, you know, these are the ones I'm gonna put out. What were you listening to at six years old? Wayne. Um, still, uh, I, I've grown up with Wayne, um, Nelly, like I said, a lot of the St. Louis artists, like the whole nine. A lot of these artists aren't around anymore, but I, I want to, if I get big enough one day, I want to find him and like, do something with him, be Willie. Uh, I know he's a gospel singer now, so I think that chance is like dead. Uh, <laughs> um, I, I can't think back further than what I can tell you, like, later on who I was listening to, but like, as far as like, cause the only person I can remember is like Wayne. Like, he literally has like ran my life, for, like my whole life. Like He raised you. He pretty much, like, he's like my third <laughs> pair, like, at this point. Like, that's either good or bad, though, because he does that, but... Uh-uh. <laughs> either good or bad, you know, depending on what you picked up from him, but, you know, it's... Yeah. Hopefully it was that work ethic, because especially back then, he was dropping, it seemed hourly. Yeah, yeah, I think that, I think that, because, like, um, even now, like, if you look at my 20, that's my 2021, because I've only been do doing, like, releasing music since 2018. This has been my busiest year. I've put out, like, probably over 20 songs. Oh, my God. Um, and so I think that, that now, I, I picked up that, you know, because he did an interview once upon a time, and I picked up that it's okay to take your time. He was talking about, like, time and how you have to spend time with your own music before you, like, let other people spend time with it. So I think that's, you know, I picked up for him the expectation that, like, if it takes me eight million years to drop something, people are going to stop paying attention, yes. At some point, okay, whatever. But, like, as far as, like, my process, like, your process is your process. With him, that was a time frame where people were talking about him for, like, he was like the hottest thing and had not put out an album in like five years. He was like the most talked about, the most requested, the most featured, the most every. He was like everywhere. This guy had not dropped the album in five years. And so I, I picked up that like you can still be, I guess, relevant or still be talked about and not have to feel like you have to drop like album after album, after album project after project. So as far as the work ethic, I don't think I work as hard as some people. It's like eight million songs a day. <laughs> Uh, I just don't, no, I, and not, not that I don't have the time to, it's just that's not appealing to me, I just can't. How do you keep up, you know? <laughs> like, yeah. You know, like, I write a song and I forget about it, like, I don't even look back on it. I feel like somebody tells me about it, I'm like, oh, yeah, I remember that, you know, like, so, yeah. Well, see, it's the ability for them to, like, remember and be like, oh, yeah, like, if what you drop is effective, then you really don't have to do that. You don't have to force yourself on people and be scandalous and all this, that, and the third. Right. And I think I'm, I'd be surprised at like how much he remembers because I've seen him live. Like this is a bit obsessive, so you know, don't don't judge me. Um, no. I've seen him. I've seen him live like twenty times. I and think that's every, amazing, actually. It is. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. And I'm always like, this is a bit obsessive too. And I'm always like front row since I was like the age of like sixteen. Since I got my first job and I could like get my own money and afford it, I was like. 
I remember there was one time I had between my cell phone bill and Wayne. I didn't have a cell phone for two months. <laughs> because I just was like, I'm going. Like, I'm going and I'm going to be on center. And like, I respect yeah. that so much. And it, it's, it's I, I like, I'm obsessed over, I'm obsessed over any, still to this day, anything he puts his hands on or anything he, he, he does. Like, you know, like Nikki and Drake, I love them to death because, you know, he molded them and created them and signed them. And so like, I'm a huge fan of theirs because they were created by Wayne. You know, sometimes when he's performing, he's performing like really old songs, like on his set list. And like he'll remember them, and I'm just like, dude, you've put out like I think there's a crazy stat. I think Wayne has put out over like 10,000 songs in his career, and like some of these songs are like like I think one time he did a song that was probably like you know I saw him two year two or so years ago. And the song's about 15 years old, and he just was reciting the song and just getting it and getting it. And I'm just like, dude, after like my cutoff is like five years, I'm not performing any songs older than five years because my brain just can't. <laughs> <laughs> How would you describe your sound? Because your sound is, I don't want to say different because I don't like that word because that can mean like bad, but you've taken EDM and hip hop and put it together and had a baby and made it make sense. I think what you just said. <laughs> <laughs> EDM and hip hop had a baby. baby. It's a, a ED hop. That's how it's, I guess I would call it that ED hop. Um, I always tell people this. These are my two biggest influences to of like an. And I've already told you guys about Wayne. So my other huge influence is Gaga. Um, Yay! And- <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> oh, yes. Love, like, love. She's another artist. I'm like, Light Bill concert. Hmm. You got any flashlights? <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> no <laughs> I always say if Lady Gaga and Wayne got together romantically and had multiple that's how I would describe my sound because that is usually when I'm like in a rut or like in a writer's block, I usually put on one of their vinyls and I usually just kind of like walk around my house and I have like the speaker system where it plays in every room and I literally just walk around and coexist with them playing and I usually, that's how I usually get my spark. So I, I think for me, my sound is that if, if you take both of them and you sit them in a the studio and you say, let's have a baby or let's, you know, make an album or make something together and, and, and do it. And I think it's, I'm influenced by both sides. You know, I think, I think I, I like to incorporate every aspect of myself in my music. You know, I am from a very urban area where, you know, all I grew up on was hip hop and all I grew up on was like, you know, this particular sound. But then later on in life, when I explore like EDM, when I explore people like, you know, Swedish House Mafia and Gaga and Sophie Tucker and, and just so many other artists that I was just like, oh my God, I love this sound. And, you know, that for the last 10, 11 years of my life has been like an, an essential piece because like I think I listen to more EDM now than rap. And so I think I, I like to incorporate that side as well because it's just, I, I, so I think my, my music is kind of like a, I, I hate using eclectic because that's kind of like overused, but I love that. I have to say eclectic because it, I wanted to highlight who I am over here. Like this is, how, this is where I'm from. This is an essential piece to me. This is kind of, you know, morals or whatever that I have or what was instilled in me from my family and stuff like that. But this is also like who I came to be and who I who I like myself as and who I want to be and just merging those two. Sometimes they clash and sometimes I'm just like, ah. So I think my music is kind of like a result of that clashing and the result is sound and shopping cart that's the latest single yeah from the album so the whole album is called diary so i referenced in referencing the diary i uh talked about earlier so diary is like it's not there's not any actual lyrics from that diary that i talked about diary is kind of the album diary is kind of like a summary of what was in that diary of it, it had like a, a spark notice of that diary. In particular, Shopping Cart, um, the song is about like, you guys know how like sometimes you go to the store and you use the same stuff in your cart, right? It's like second nature. You're like, okay, I need this, this. You know the brand you want. You have your preference. Like you, you're you gonna get peanut butter cap and crunch instead of the regular, because you know, you like peanut butter cap and crunch and et cetera, et cetera. And so I actually wrote Shopping Cart in a grocery store. Um, I was I was shopping with, you know, me and my husband were shopping and I was like, I got an idea, you don't have to push the cart. <laughs> so I can't push the <laughs> cart. And I followed behind him on my phone, like, you know, because I was walking through and he said something along the lines of, you know, why don't we just do like a, a pickup order? Like we get the same stuff, like why not, you know, do a pickup order? I'm like, you know what, he right. Like he might be right. And it, it hit me and I was like, hmm. Walk, so I wrote it in a grocery store and it's, it's kind of about like that, that phenomenon of, 
how we go to the store expecting a different experience every time, but yet we put the same stuff in our carts. Shopping cart is really about like sometimes just standing back metaphorically and looking at kind of like your emotional shopping cart and being like, why am I putting the same stuff in this over and over and over? over and over and over and over. Like, why don't I try to change up some of the stuff? Try something new, try something out that's different. And I, so I think the lyrics really reflect me reflecting on like, maybe it's time to go a different route. Like maybe it's time for me to, you know, instead of going to this aisle, I'll go to this aisle. Or, so it's about tying emotions to a grocery store trip. Kind of just looking at your emotions on a, on a canvas of, why am I putting, you know, if, the, if this person or whomever keeps doing the same thing to me over and over and over, why am I putting them in my basket? Like, why am I, you know, mm-hmm. I love they, that. like why? And so it's kind of a diss, but kind of like at the same time, but also like a, you can, you can put different stuff in your cart without putting the same people in there. Like this can be a, this, this grocery trip is going to be the best grocery trip ever because you're going to switch some stuff up. You're not going to put, you know, you're going to try out the regular Captain Crunch today. You're not going to try that old, you know, peanut butter or stick with the rivers and lakes that you're used to. You're going to you're gonna try something new. So I think shopping cart came from a trip to the grocery store. Uh, me, at the point I wrote it, feeling like, like, I need to change some stuff up. Like, I'm tired. Like, cause I noticed the same people were, like, ticking me off. These same people. And I'm just kind of like, if I know you have a tendency to tick me off, why does it keep happening? And so I wrote shopping cart to kind of be like, I'm going to diss you, but at the same time, I'll still let you know that like I'm done. Like I'm, I'm, I'm getting something new. I'm going to experience newness. And if I do that, then you, there's a less likelihood that you'll tip me off. What was your favorite memory from that video shoot? So there's this part, and we only use like 10 minutes of it. So my videographer is my engineer, and he's also my photographer. A and so we, trades. sometimes it's frustrating, sometimes it's not. <laughs> um, <laughs> you're kind of like, oh, were you supposed to edit the video? Oh yeah, but I was editing your song. And it's like, no, 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 the song is part of <laughs> There was a part where we were in a uh, like this little dungeon warehouse room. And it was like dark, it was cold, it smelled like mildew, it just stank. It was like, a, I thought I was gonna die from like poison in this. <laughs> and the thing is, we only use like five seconds of the shot in the video. And when I saw the video, I was like, dude, you had me down there in the basement with just water dripping, this, that, and the third, and we used five seconds of it. So, <laughs> because it, I was like freaking out, we the whole and we were just laughing and laughing and laughing about the experience because I'm just kind of like, something's gonna hop out and grab me. Like, I don't know what's back here. It's oh, dark, no. there's some the windows. All, oh I see is like, all I see is like a brick wall. I hear some water dripping from somewhere. I don't see where it's dripping from. I don't know if it's even coming from me. Like, <laughs> it's, it's. Uh, I think my favorite part because we had a laugh about it was that, even though it was like the most crying part, it was my favorite because we just, because I was cracking jokes and he was cracking jokes, we just couldn't stop laughing. And so that was, that was my least favorite, but favorite part. It was, it was just an experience because I like to, when I'm working, I don't, I like to, like feel I'm having fun too. Like that's an important criteria for me so I don't get bored with just like in general. I like to have fun still. Like I've been doing this for three, four years now and I still, when I go to the studio, I still want friends or somebody there to have conversation with while I'm writing or while I'm recording or while, just because experience to me is like fun. You know, I, I like I get my inspiration from experience. So I just like to have fun. But although I could have died or been snatched up at any given moment, I still have fun. <laughs> No, I can't. That sounds, it's, it sounds like a little bit like Blair Witch Project or something like that. It was given very much that. <laughs> it was, it was very much, I, either that, Resident Evil, like every horror movie you can oh think of. Oh my God, no. <laughs> Resident Evil is was- Like when I say it was dark, it was like, there was like no windows. Like, and we shot this at like three in the afternoon and it still was not light. There was like not a thing. And I'm like, who built something without a window, first of all? Like, Ooh. <laughs> That's a valid statement. It, it, it was just, and then there, the thing is, there was nothing in there. So I'm like, what, what are they using this for? Who's in mm-hmm. here? Exactly. <laughs> like, who exactly. is this for? I love the diary, like, so the cover art. Are you telling us something? Sort of. So I shot the cover art. I don't know if you can look to the left. In the corner, there's like this display case. The cover art was actually shot in my house. And I wanted to shoot it in my house because this sentiment of the album is very personal. And so I wanted the photos to be somewhere very personal. I wanted the message to be very personal. I wanted the person shooting it to be very personal. Um, so the person who shot the cover art for Diary, he doesn't know this, so I'm probably it's gonna probably be a bombshell, is one of the people I was talking about in shopping. He shot the actual, but, but 
but he shot the actual cover art. Me, me and him had already, when we had amended everything, the album was already finished. We turned it. Okay. When we amended everything. <laughs> and so, <laughs> but I was just like thinking when I was like, we're going to shoot this cover. I was like, you know, and I thought I said, you know what, I'm going to, since we're amending things, we're on this road to recover, which we still are. Um, he, he was a very close friend and his name is Artez. He shot it and um, I wanted to include, like going back to kind of like what I, when I asked the question, like my sound, I wanted to include like the blend of who I am. So for people who don't know, and I like to be like a friend about this, I am part of the LGBTQIA community. So there's that side. And then, you know, I'm, there's corporate Ricky, because I have a master's degree and bachelor's degree and I have a corporate job. And then there's like this third part of me that's kind of like a fusion of both of those. And, and with a little bit of like ratchetness and a little bit of, you know, whatever else I bring from my childhood. And so the reason there's three of me on the cover art is um, there's me to the side in the uh, leather suit. That's kind of like the LGBTK, like the feminine side. Like I'm accessing that feminine side and I'm showing that like, you know, it's, I used to hide it. Like I hid it for so many years. It's kind of like, I'm at a point now where I'm like, I'm gonna show it. People either gonna like it or they're not. They don't like it. There's tons of other artists out there. Cool. Then the mm -hmm. one that's sitting, the me that's sitting to the furthest back, that's the corporate me with the magazine I believe I have. It's kind of like, you know, I'm in a business suit and I'm dressed up. It's kind of like how I go to work every day, and et cetera, et cetera, yada, yada, yada. And then the me that's to the right with the head chopped off. <laughs> uh, so that's the, the blend. And the reason the head is chopped off is because that is right in this and, and in my diary. I sometimes feel like that's who people try to like down the most um, when they either listen to my music or just people in general, they try to like, they frown upon Ricky the most because like if I'm like at work and I try to sprinkle in some of that like feminineness or ratchetness or whatever, then the corporate world's kind of frowning at me like, Ugh, like what are you doing? Like, you know, you shouldn't be doing that. It's a professional setting. Yeah. Yada, yada, yada. You know, I, and, I, and I still go to these urban environments. Like, I still go to, like, the hood, visit my grandmother, you know. I'm not hanging out in the hood, like, at all. I'm not gonna ever say that. <laughs> but um, I still go there because I still have family that lives there. And so when I go to these places, sometimes, like, after work, and I'm, like, in a business suit, you know, sometimes people look at me like, oh, you've moved up or you've moved on. You're no longer one of us, da, 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 and et cetera, et cetera. And it's like, no, I'm still, I'm still one of you guys. I'm just dressed different. Like, I'm, right. You know, I, just, I just have on different clothes. <laughs> like, that's it. And so the head, I chopped the head off because I just, you know, I feel like that's how people do me. Like when people find out, like, you know, I have a husband and I'm a part of the community, they, just, they expect my legs to be like, oh, he's going to have, he's going to talk about what happens like the man, da 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 et cetera, et cetera. And it's kind of like, well, yes, you're right, you're correct, you know, because that's my experience. But also, like, no, like on a song like Shopping Park, I don't reference anything that's like to me that's completely lyrical song like that's strictly bar for bar lyric for lyric and that's kind of what people have been telling me feedback i've been getting from like bloggers and just everything like that this is like your best lyrical stuff and so i think you know i cut the head off because i think sometimes people cut my head off with even without giving me a chain like you know let me explain mm -hmm. why i dress like this or you know why i'm rapping about this or why i'm mean, just kind of like nope chop your head off and so i just kind of like you know what Instead of you guys chopping my head, I'll cut my own head off. You know, and just right. not and even. The head me. looks like he's having a good time anyway. And, see, you, you know, you know, you get me. <laughs> <laughs> it, and I and I made that face. I wanted to exactly what said. I wanted to let people know, like, you cut my head off. I'm still having a good time. I'm still gonna do this. I'm still gonna, you know, be ratchet, or I'm still gonna rap about this because that that is my experience. You know, my one of my favorite words of all the time. If you guys can't tell, is experience. That is mm -hmm. my experience. And experience comes to you. Experience is not already pre-chosen. You know what I mean? And so I'm letting these, my inspirations and all that come to me. And I'm not, I don't really care if you chop my head. I'm at a point in my career where I'm like, if you're gonna chop my head, I'll find, I'll do it for you. Here you go, mm -hmm. here's my head. And you see the head is on a plate. So here's my head on a plate. You can have it. I don't really want it back because I'm gonna do me. And that's just kind of where I'm at. That's amazing. And you got the... Yeah. Deluxe to Diary is coming out next month. On the 31st of December, and although some people frown upon, like, why are you releasing a song on New Year's Eve? You're not that big. New Year's Eve has a lot of significance to me because it was my very first single of all time in 2018 called Fist. Um, it was my very first single release. And so every time that, every year that, that day or something comes, I uh, want to release something. And so when I put out the regular Diary, I I always shortball myself. I always go like, oh yeah, nobody's gonna listen to 
just like, I'm gonna put this out and a few people don't listen to it, you know, I'm, it's gonna be whatever, and, you know, I'm gonna go on my day and yada, yada, yada. And so I told myself, I said, my album reaches 10,000 streams. I'm gonna put out the deluxe, but it won't reach 10,000 streams until like the end of 2022. And then it, it hit 10,000 in like October. <laughs> I was like, oh, well, okay. Uh, okay, so what does this mean? And so I was planning on doing something different on the 31st of this year that I'm no longer doing because the 10,000 was hitting yesterday. You know, like my, my album's still being added to like playlists and stuff. And so I'm like, this thing came out in September. I was expected to be just like, dang, like, come on. You know, I'm gonna go and work on the next project. Like, oh, yay, debut album. And it's kind of like, no. People are still like playing, adding, or right? this, that, and the third. I'm great for that, but I'm, you know, I, like I sharp bought myself. And so I switched it up and I said, you know what? Because the people got it to 10,000. And it's, it's not like 10,000, like on Spotify, it's 10,000 cumulatively from like everything, Apple, SoundCloud, all that. Um, if you, now it's at like 12 or 13 or something like that. But I said, because it's gotten there, it's gotten to that point. I've had a record year for me. You know, I had a show and like 30 something people showed up. I was expecting like five to show up. I had this album, you know, the 10,000, it hit 10,000. I've shot two music, three music videos. I've, I've gotten more like plays and buys and streams in this year alone than my whole entire music career combined. Um, so I just kind of like celebrate this record year and you know, to, as a thank you for people, because I also made people wait three years for a debut album. Um, so it's a little bit of that, like, you know, a lot of my friends and my supporters have been on this album. And there's a, cause I, I dropped single here, single there, single here, and they were always like, album, album, album. And I drop an album, <laughs> and then it's eight songs. And so some of the feedback I was getting was like, you made me wait three years for eight songs, like, I need more, I need more, I need more. So I'm kind of like, okay, gotcha, gotcha. So yeah, I'm putting out the deluxe on the 31st. It's gonna have, the people on my email list are gonna have five extra songs. And then uh, publicly, there's only gonna be four extra songs. Um, so I'm throwing four extra original songs on there. Songs that were supposed to make the cut originally, but I just, when I finally sat back and I was like, eh, they didn't make the cut. And so these are songs that I'm, I kind of redid or rewrote or something like that. And I'm like, okay, now that I think they can make the cut, of course, you know, it's a deluxe. And so I'm putting that out and then I'm doing a couple other things with it. Um, it's gonna be like new merch. The cover art for the deluxe, wow. I just have to say, wow. I don't even know what to say what? about it. It's it, it just, wow. I, I can tell you guys to cover art if you want, if you like, but like cover art uh, is wow. The name of it is, it's Diary Deluxe, but the name of it is Diary of the Man in the Mirror. And then it's gonna be like parentheses below. The name of it will make sense once you guys see the cover art because it is like, I think the cover art is the best photo I've ever taken. Like literally. Really? I can't like, wait to see to it. It is. So you hear that, guys? You got to get on the, the email list to get five extra songs. Tell the yes. listeners how they can sign up for the email list so they can get the extra songs. Uh, my website, richardhouse.net, is R I C H A R D H A U S dot net. So the German spelling of house. And then there's a, at the top of the website, there's an email subscription button. Any link, the link in my bio, any of my socials, uh, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Um, you just hit that link in my bio, it'll take you to my uh, landing page where all the streaming services are. You can also sign up for your email there. Those are the main, they're very, very easy to find, like, and even my website. So I think the easiest way would just be to go to my socials and click the link in my bio. That'll take you to my website and the subscription thing. Or if you just are old fashioned and want to go straight to the website, witcherhouse.net. Now we're going to get into some of our fun questions. Who would your dream collab be, dead or alive? I think I know the answer, though. <laughs> oh, maybe a combination or just one person? Yeah, it could be whoever. I want, okay, I want Prince, I want Amy Winehouse, I want Gaga, I want Nicki. I think that's it. Producer you would like to collab with? Ooh, Patronata or Channel Trey. What is your recording process like? The experience, like I said, something, <laughs> I'm sitting somewhere, Something happens, I usually analyze it or look at it and I'm just like, idea, write. And once I write, I write for a couple weeks. Once I feel like it's good to go, I then take it to, I have an in-home studio, I record it, and then I take it to the studio, studio with like my engineer. After like a couple weeks, I like to spend time with it. I would say it takes me on average probably a month to write a song. I never write songs unless it's like freestyle or in band. Some songs, yes. Like there's only a few songs where I'm like, like shopping cart, 
I had that finished by the time we left the grocery store because I was like, I need to finish this in the grocery store. Like, this is important. And you can act, even ask Ryan, <laughs> my engineer slash photographer slash everything else. I usually, there's usually multiple variations of songs. So every song I've released, I probably have like eight different versions of every song I've ever done, which is why it also takes me a long time. Cause I spend like, I go back, I'm like, change this, tweak this, let me change this lyric, let me change the way this bravado hits, or let me add this much auto tune off, or this, that, and the third. So it takes probably, to finish a song is about a three month process for me. I like to consider myself a perfectionist because some of my earlier stuff to me sounds crappy, which I want to fix that in the year 2022. That's going to be like later though. Um, but the more recent stuff like Steady and Take Batter and stuff like that, I already sound more like polished. So I think all together, like three, three month turnaround, I, I have to experience something, I get influenced by it, I write about it. And it usually is something that reminds me of my childhood. It reminds me of what I'm going through now. So I'm like, I want to write more about that. Like if I went out and had a good time with friends, I usually come, I'm the worst at like going out because I usually go out and then go home and then write for like three hours and then go to bed. Like that's why I don't like going out because it's kind of like I know I'm not getting any sleep tonight <laughs> because I'm literally about to go home and write about this, you know, this fun time or write about this experience or write about what it made me think about or my wishes or whatever. So uh, yeah, about three month turnaround for a song. Uh, which is why my next album probably won't come until like 2023. It's already been worked on and it's already like laid out, but as far as like release, probably 2023, that doesn't mean 2022 is gonna be. What are some goals you have for yourself at this point in your career? Shows, been mortified of doing them. Definitely shows that, that I think that's it and just continue to embrace that. Like I got control of my journey, I think. And, and I'm actually talking to some venues locally right now. Um, possibly getting on the radar to be on somebody's tour, uh, have more of a presence. Even when I'm not dropping music, just have more of a presence to, you know, drop content or something like that. Cause I'm like, I post like, even my social media is very inactive. Music is handled. I probably have like four years worth of music, like ready to go. It's handled. And what can we expect next from Richard? There's a deluxe on the 31st. And then there's another deluxe I mean, out in 2022. I won't say too much about that because I want it to be a surprise for my day ones. Um, but it's another deluxe, which will include more music and like a re-release and et cetera, et cetera. I kind of just spoiled it. More music videos. Can we expect next? I am trying not to be, because I have a, a stockpile of money just like sitting over there to the side to make Richard House a collective and looking for artists. I am looking for other artists, like-minded artists, such as myself to bring on this collective that I can invest in. I think it's lonely sometimes, tear, tear. Um, <laughs> and that's, and just bracing down and still doing music. A lot of people think because they don't see stuff from me that I'm not working and I am always working, whether it be an interview, whether it be Long, whether it be a video, whether it be an album, because I could change my mind and say, you know what, I feel like dropping an album in 2022. Uh, I'm definitely going to go to more concerts. Concerts are a big influence. I mean, now that everything's back open, I am going to a lot of concerts. More music, definitely in 2022. It won't be a quiet 2022. It's like it was a 2021. It'll be, uh, I might do another mixtape. I haven't really decided yet. I have a stockpile of freestyles like over there waiting but you know so i think i'm just going to keep recording consistency 2020 and 2019 were like my downtime when i got like mm -hmm. all this music done and all this stuff you know recorded and now i'm like let's be proactive let's do video put stuff out let's do things let's do shows let's whatever let's do interviews let's do all this stuff right and shout your socials out one more time for our listeners and let them know where they can sign up for your mailing list and your website and all that good stuff Follow me on Instagram at underscore Richard underscore Coop. So that's Richard underscore R-I-C-H-A-R-D underscore C-O-O-P. Um, on Twitter, you can follow me at Recluse underscore 0319. R-E-K-L-U-S-E underscore 0319. Um, and then on Facebook, just look up Richard. Uh, I have a Facebook page on there. It has about, there's a bunch of Richards. Mine has about 300-ish likes, so it's that one. It'll have me on it, of course. You can sign up for my mailing list from the bio on any of my socials. Click on that bio, it'll take you to kind of like email subscription button, or you can just go directly to my website, richardhaus.net, all one word, german spelling of house.net, and then go through that as well. 
right, and we're going to get into some Richard, and we'll be right back. Welcome back to In The Field Radio. I'm Erin Boogie, and I'm really glad you guys got to hear from Lady D tonight. I thought that was really special for her to be able to record the intro and to join for the interview as well. I hope you guys enjoyed the interview with Richard. He's really cool. He got some dope music coming out, so make sure you stay in tune with his movement. I know he lets you know where you can find him and all his music and his socials, so make sure you do that. Before we get out of here real quick, I just wanted to talk about a couple things that we got going on. Um, And I want to talk about that versus battle. I hope you guys tuned in because that was probably the versus battle that we didn't know we needed, but was super entertaining. Um, It happened over the week with uh, Bone Thugs and Harmony and 3-6 Mafia. Things got a little wild in the beginning when Busy Bone felt like 3-6 Mafia was mocking him while Bone was performing. And he ended up throwing a water bottle or a microphone over towards 3-6 Mafia. And Juicy J came over throwing punches. And there was, you know, all the groups met, came together. There was a little bit of a scuffle. They had to cut to a commercial. But they came back. Everyone hugged it out. They were able to finish the verses. I was, too, as a Bone fan, oh my God. From day one, I've loved that group. So it was really cool to see them all come together, especially since Busy Bone hasn't been a part of the group in a long time. And you just really feel how monumental his verses are to the group. So it was cool to see him come out. It sucks that they had that little scuffle going on, but I'm glad that everybody was able to come back out. They were able to hug it out and they were able to continue the battle because that was one of my favorite verses. I mean, they brought out literally everybody. Little Wayne, Little John. Um, They had project pat they even brought out strippers for bands to make a dance like you can't make it up it was so entertaining and it was a really good battle so i'm glad that they were able to get past the beef and come together and finish it out so i'll be looking forward to whatever the next verses was um something i got to check out i got to preview the hip-hop 50 exhibit that mass appeal is doing down in new york city it's at 381 broadway it's an experience it's something you should definitely check out. So what they did is to celebrate uh, hip hop's uh, 50th anniversary right now. Mass Appeal is doing a multi-year celebration of hip hop culture, and they set up an exhibit. Um, it's three different floors, and when you walk in, the first one is set up. I can't remember the documentaries. I'll have to get that to you guys next week. But the documentaries are dropping um, every Friday for the next couple weeks on Showtime. So the first documentary they set up like a New York City street. It was really cool. They had people playing chess, like in the park. They had a frosade cart set up. They had um, a couple break dancers. Then you go downstairs, and it, it was like being behind the scenes at a music concert with video music box. So you walk downstairs, and security opens the velvet roll. They give you your little VIP pass. You get to go in. There's a lounge. There's an area to do shout outs, um, uh, entrance to a stage. And then you go downstairs to the third floor and they have it set up like train tracks and it's all graffiti and um, different graffiti artists have pictures up there and stuff. So it was really cool. I definitely suggest checking that out. Um, for the holidays, we're partnering up for the with the Gold Standard Boutique. They have a location on Academy Street and one in the Hudson Valley or in the Poughkeepsie Galleria. They're doing a toy drive so you can bring unwrapped toys and gift cards there and they're going to hand that out to the less fortunate this holiday season super good cause make sure you guys definitely stop by and drop off something good for the kids and we are also putting together um, another sessions event i'll have more information next week but it looks like we're going to do a sessions live event where we're going to be judging performances almost like an american idol the voice type like that style where you'll perform you'll get feedback and at the end of it all we're going to offer a management contract Um, so there's a big chance someone could get a deal out of this one. So that's really cool. Like I said, we we're ironing out the details and we'll have more information for you next week, but you can check in the field radio out everywhere at in the field radio, email us info at in the field radio.com. If there's something you like, something you don't like question, comments, concerns, um, we're open to it all, but if not, then we'll catch you next week. Thanks for chilling with those chicks on Monday, 91.3 FM WVKR Poughkeepsie independent radio.